Hello and welcome to another week of the European Tour Picks and Bets on Mayo Media Network. Skylar Hoke here with you. Tom, how's it going? It's good. Yeah, I uh, had some success on the PJ Tour, which is obviously not the point of this video, but last week was uh, a good run with Kisner and Sloan, so I was happy about that on, uh, on our other podcast there. But uh, European Tour felt like a bit of a lit down as it generally seems to be on a Sunday. Uh, you know, Rasmus Hogard promised plenty, delivered nothing on the final day. Um, but you know, story of my life, but we go again this week, don't we? That's true. We do PGA tour. Yeah. I mean, I, the, the six man playoff was quite incredible. Adam Scott, you know, just brooming by a little four footer gives the door open for, for Kisner, um, was, was fun to see that after a lot of talk on him across the weekend for the Ryder cup. And I know we'll be anxiously awaiting some of those picks. Um, I hope, as I hope we you pick him. That'd be great. <laughs> pick him. But um, no, I mean, on the European tour side, these Sundays are, are getting out of hand almost. It's like literally anybody inside the top 20 going into Sunday has a shot, you know, mm-hmm. at, whether you're three, four, five clear to start the day, it's seemingly, um, you know, the back nine is, is wide open. Shinkwin was the closest, you know, from my end who ended up placing, but, you know, he was a few birdies away from, from being right there too. Um, and that's, again, a consistent theme that we've seen on these Sundays and, and more and more winners just you know, kind of coming, I guess I wouldn't necessarily say out of the blue, but not the anticipated favorite, I'd say going into to that Sunday. No, and especially we've got a player this week in Sam Horsfield, who's a, a heavy favorite, you know, especially, you know, see him going in like a four or five shot lead on Sunday and everyone would think it was over, but the European tour just doesn't work like that. It's just, they're just, I don't know if it's the pins and it's the, the variable weather. I don't know if it's just the guys are not tested nerve-wise as the PJ Tour players are in, in different circumstances. I guess it may be a bit of a college golf versus not college. I don't know. It, but there just seems to be a very fragile front runners every week um, on the European Tour. I thought Richard Bland would go well on Sunday after putting himself in position. Uh, didn't quite do so. But, um, you know, it's good. It makes for more entertaining viewing, um, especially if you're the beneficiary of it. Obviously, Callum Shinkwin took a, a good step forward yesterday. And he's been in incredible form, isn't he? You know, he'd expect him to go well again this week. Yeah, and that's where we kind of run into as we introduce the the D and D or a D plus D real check masters um, at Albatross Golf Club here. You know, these weaker fields with trending players, we end up getting odds that are are very unbettable for a lot of guys that are in form. Shinkwin being, you know, one of them at at twenty to one. Um, we had a middle of the night entry into the field. The silver medalist Rory Sabatini decided to come show up and play the Czech Masters, which I think did alter the odds in the standpoint. I mean, Horsefield was really the standalone favorite. I think Sabatini's come in there um, to add right in the mix at kind of similar odds. In a sense, Danny Willett is also anyone or uh, up there as well on the odds board. Anybody for you kind of in that shorter range uh, stand out as somebody you could go in on? Uh, yeah, I mean, we kind of spoke earlier. Uh, I mean, I like Shinkwin. I really do like Shinkwin. Uh, funny enough, there's a big, seems to be a bit of a South African sort of link to this, and Rory Sabatini would have once upon a time fit into that. So, um, you know, but, you know, less said about that, the better, I suppose. But, um, you know, Vincent Norman, for me, before the, the selections that we get into, would have been the one that kind of stood out to me. I think, you know, you were very, very early on him, um, the triple digit odds, and he's now sitting here at 28 to 1. And, you have to kind of get this message across to people that it looks horrible betting these guys at 28 to one after backing them for 100, 150 to one. But it just simply is his value now. Like that is just the odds he should be. The, the talent he's got, um, I think this is a course that sets up perfectly for him. Um, I, I kind of found a quote, Steve Rawlings on, on Betfair did a quote where the, the Hills Golf Club at the 2018, 2019 uh, Nordea Masters and Scandinavian Invitational was kind of a, a correlated corollary to this and um gary portius and andrea pavan have both played well there they're both finished in the top six and jamie donaldson's finished fifth there as well so there seems to be a bit of a nordic crossover so norman obviously played well in his home country back at the scandinavian um and it'll explain some of my selections further down the line but um yeah he was the one for me um in a shorter answer um that stood out and we'll talk about him shortly um, as as well. Very fancied on my end. But 
I'll take this time first to make sure, you know, it's a huge, you know, year coming up for Mayo Media Network as football season comes around, golf season sees itself into the FedEx playoffs, and so many different sports are being represented um, on this platform. We really appreciate if you can rate and review, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Um, that goes a long way for our show to continue um, being supported. And as we look into the audio formats, again, if you are more of a podcast listener, listen to us on our your commute into the mornings, uh, feel free on Daily Fantasy Sports picks and bets the mix you can find us on all of your podcast platforms as well um you hit the nail on the head with norman for me you know with the talent we've seen out of him somebody who like i like i mentioned comes out from florida state does one year there john pox teammate you know doesn't get the same prolifics there and has i mean i dare say the best start of anybody you know that really comes to mind from a consistency standpoint until last week when he finally did not play the weekend, um, you know, and that found, I think, a little bit of value in in his odds. You know, if he does what Shankwin does or if he comes in for another top 10, you can see him being 20 to 1, 18 to 1. Um, and, and that, to me, is just something where you have to... I guess, take the, the medicine of one missed cut for a weekend and, and take the value that represents in the odds. He's the best driver on the European tour by a substantial margin. It's not even close, you know, and we, you know, you see that represented in distance, you see that represented in, and obviously strokes gained off the tee. Um, so if this course to me, we've seen it in the past, Peters with, with the victory twice here, you know, and you kind of look at that leaderboard, Hugo, who we're going to talk about shortly, was on the Audrey Arnas, Christopher Wrighton was up there, who's, you know, one of the longest hitters who just does not do anything well other than that. So in my opinion, I think it's worth chancing, you know, Norman, even at these short odds, 28 to one, I'm more than happy to go into, and I'm going to be a little bit uh, more heavy on these shorter guys. So kind of had to uh, kind of make some decisions up here and then go into the long shots well later. Yeah, and you talk about uh, long shots that don't really do anything else very well. I mean, Hayden Porteous uh, hits the ball country mile and, you know, has one here. And funny enough, you know, I, I generally probably won't put him up, but he has played nowhere well except for the Scandinavian mix this year. He finished tied ninth. And I just wonder if, if he can come back and, and relive some of the memories of, of the former win here. You know, he's a, he's a high-quality player on his day. It's just that his biggest attribute is the, is the driver. So... Um, Jacks Kroisovic for me was was my first selection um, at twenty eight to one, and it feels like a bit of a short price for someone that hasn't won. Um, it feels like a short price for someone that's had a lot of chances, um, but the consistency. I mean, you, he's going to play the weekend. You feel like I mean, he's had one missed cut uh, in twenty twenty one. That was on the Challenge Tour. Um, he's just been very, very, very consistent. Seventh and twenty third at this uh, event on this golf course. Um, you know, leads the par five performance. He's third in birdie, sixth in eagles, um, which is just the order of, order of play this week. You know, you have to make eagles, you have to make birdies, take advantage of the par fives. Well, he ticks every single one of those boxes. Um, you know, he, he plays well where I want him to play well. Um, he's played some good stuff in South Africa, obviously being from there. So for me, yeah, I really like Jack Croy. So don't love the price, but um, a bit like you, Norman, I think you just got to take the price if you think they fit the profile. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And again, we're getting into a spot. I think, I guess my cutoff, I would guess would probably be the 28, 25s, unless I'm making a stand on, on just the one. Um, and, and because similar trending factors, I have to go back to the well, if you go Leon, you know, I mean, you mentioned a lot of this with the cruises here, you know, it's, the consistency in the sense, I mean, if you look at what Hugo has done since he lost in that playoff, you know, 14th, 7th, 16th uh, for Hugo in three starts relatively without any, you know, kind of lead in outside of that one strong challenge to our finish. Um, and now he's put himself in a position where he, he's fighting again for that status for next year. He's coming back to a spot where, you know, we have, I would say, argue was best finish of his career, um, you know, of recent memory for Hugo. And you see, you know, when he finished that fifth place here, he was, I think like 175 or, or maybe even 200 to one that week um, came in, you know, decent form, nothing to the degree that it is now. And, you know, what he has done, he's really good still off the tee. He's a really good par fiver, but what he's been doing unbelievable well since his return, he's like the best par four scorer right now on the European tour. Um, and that's something that I kind of put a lot of stock in, meaning, you know, you see that, that par four is obviously the most, um, 
most of quantity on on the scorecards. So to have him dominate those, it seems just more of a matter of time before the par fives even get back to what it was. And again, off the tee, there's not much you know damage or, or issues you can get into with a wayward drive. So I think you can just really bomb it out here. He would continue to do that. 35 to one, that's hard. You know, that's hard, but I'd be regretting, you know, not picking him. And at the end of the day, there wasn't enough to me not to to say, okay, I'm going to pass on him. So 28s and 35s is a lot for me, especially when I have two other picks under 60 to one. Um, but I, I can't pass you. Well. I, I think it's just, it, it is the same for all three selections we've just done there. We, we love the players, we love the profiles, don't love the price. And I think weeks like this, you just have to, you just have to swallow the, the you know, bite the bullet and just, just go with it because why why avoid it? If you think they're going to win or you think they're going to contend, it would just be stupid to rule it out. I mean, if, if you're going to go for them at 50s, I'd rather just be on them and win the money than than just completely leave them alone. And the thing I like about Hugo Leon's fifth place finish here in 2019, never outside the top five all week. It wasn't like he shot a 62 on Sunday and just fell out the leaderboard. You know, he was fourth, third, third, and fifth after each round. So, you know, just really, really solid form. Um you know, n- nothing really to say he can't do it. He's in, he's in great current form. He fits with your profiles that you like. Um, and to be honest, like, I looked down the cards that, that we're going to go on to. We, we agree on one in a minute as well. But the next guy you've got coming up fits the profile as well as Vincent Norman does. Yeah, I, I just, the more I thought about this course and kind of I deciphered it. And again, 2019 played out specifically one way. When it was Pavan you know, and Padre Harrington playing the year before, if you didn't putt out of your mind, you didn't see a chance, you know, to contend that week. So there has been different ways, but the last time that course was played, I really, really liked continuing that angle of distance. And if you look and off the T specialists, and there's a clear one on the European tour right now, it's Vincent Norman, there's a clear number two, and that's Daniel Van Tonder, you know, and where I think, again, the little facts of of one i guess not for van tander it's kind of been a string of them but one strong finish could could cut your odds in half and one average finish is going to get you in that 40 to 1 range you know van tander ended up finishing i think it was mid 20s last week 21st but on that back nine on sunday he had a quadruple bogey um which you know you eliminate that you end up you know coming into the places you know he's a t7 finish there and he's realistically he's 28 to 1 he's 33 to 1 you know um 40s on him what we know about his pedigree i mean i guess he's i would i'd probably say he's the new age george could in the sense that he's won a ton on these lower tournament tournaments he now has a card to get through that but you know we've talked about his year and where he just kind of pops and this is the the course that i would find as perfect as it could be for a skill set like van tonder so again it's really similar if i pull up um i'm gonna pull this up as we talk i found this pretty interesting because this course has three par fives another drivable par four that will should play drivable every single day um you also i think there's one more that could be um drivable in the sense if they play the tees up and we know norman had the the ace on a par four earlier this year but i love that the european tour keeps this statistic um and it's greens under regulation this you have to take it deep here you know you're gonna need 18 19 20 under you're gonna need to eagle you're gonna need to drive these par fours if you look at the guys on, on the top of the list, Vincent Norman's number one, you know, and, and Thomas Peters is number two. Daniel Van Tonder comes in at number seven. And what do all these guys have in common? It's no surprise. You know, they're they're elite drivers of the golf ball. They're really long with distance, but I like the long irons that are required to hit a green from 200 yards out, you know, um, and give themselves eagle opportunities. Cruzwich is 11th on that list. Shinkwin's 12, you know. There's, there's a lot of strong drivers that are also capitalizing on where they put themselves on these par fives, drivable par fours. So I, I really, really hope um, to continue to see a lot of that. We'll reference that stat later on too. Yeah, and I think to me, like, um, you think about players like Ryan Fox, like, I yep. just think that Van Tonder is the same, not the same guy. I think there's, there's differences. I think maybe Ryan Fox is better on links tracks, but same skill set, right? And he's double the price. Um, I know Ryan Fox has obviously done it before, but not often he's not he's not he doesn't win as much as he should so but when you put it into that kind of context um you know for me i think he's a great price and just going on to the guy that um you know we both agree on this week garrick porteous 
the best statistic he's got going for him is strokes gain surname beginning with P. Um, because apart from Jamie Donaldson, the winners here have been Thomas Peters twice, Andrew Pavan, Hayden Porteous, and Paul Peterson. So, you know, he's got a great chance just by having a surname of P. Um, but no, but seriously, you know, we were on him last week and, uh, he, you know, it wasn't great, but it was nothing to do. I thought with he was bullshit. going to be great. He was like 300 through five holes when I woke yeah. up on Thursday when I was like, all right, here we go. Yeah, I, I thought we'd done it. I said, like, I said to, in the video, I said, it's going to be your fault if it goes wrong. <laughs> and it, I was 300 through five and I was like, it's all going great. And then all of a sudden, you know, went back to reality. But there was absolutely nothing to do with what he'd done off the tee. Like he was third off the tee last week. I think he was 21st in strokes going approach. Um, you referenced the greens under regulation. Um, he's right right there in uh, inside the top six. He's won a place uh, where he's tied for uh, Van Tonda, but in double the amount of rounds. So um, really impressive there. He's one behind Horsfield. So that's the favourite in the tournament. So, you know... Perfect skill set for this. Um, I think there's plenty still to come from him. I think there's, I think when you look at, I kind of compare him a little bit to Callum Shinquin. I think there's a similar sort of trajectory potential there. Um, so I really, really like him. I think he's got an absolute great chance. Um, when you look at his um, challenge tour form as well, you know, won the Prague challenge on the challenge tour. He was fifth and ninth at the Slovakia challenge and Czech challenge as well. You know, again, not the same courses, none of them are on the same course, but just the area. Like, I love location form. I love the fact that you see it on the PJ Tour. You go, guys love Texas. Guys love California. Yeah, they love East Coast versus West Coast. And we don't talk about green surfaces an awful lot um, on the European Tour, but I think it's going to be something as simple as that. You might just love the greens in, in Czechoslovakia. So, for me, I'm just really happy to be on Garrett Porteous. The yeah, I, I, I to stop you there before you go to the next one. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. If you look at the ball striking again, his finish doesn't line up with how well he struck the ball last week. You know, he was, let's see, Shinkwin was ahead of him, Maverick Gankliff, Marcel Seam, and then Garrett Portia. So, you know, top five in ball striking, you know, with a 60th place finish. So that's all for me after the week before, you know, he had gained almost two strokes per round, which had him top five in that event as well. So back-to-back -back events, top five of ball striking of those teeing it up this week. Yeah, 60 to one, 55s. You know, I, I I love going back to him. He seems like very discounted. Well, I think I think for me, like Chase Hanna was one that I have jumped off and I'd be really, really upset if he went on one. But I think you have to kind of pull it. But I didn't want to jump off towards this after one week, like, Everything I loved about him last week, I love even more. So I actually think this is a better event for him than it was last week. I think we were kind of, we were unsure, weren't we, what the skill set was required last week. And I think that he's off the tee game. is going to lend itself perfectly. So it's a bit like Toby Tree last week. I think that the, the two guys, that they probably both prefer, they both actually finished tied 60th, didn't they? Um, and I think they could both really just pull up trees this week. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I think they're perfect for them. But the other guy that I was very hastily coming on to, just because I really didn't want to forget, um, Schwan Kim, you know, is a guy that you've mentioned an awful lot, a um, guy that we've kind of debated on and off most weeks recently. Um, as I said before, like, it was always motored by short game. It was always around the short game. And now he's kind of found a different thing. His irons are a lot better. He was tempting his strokes going approach last week. Um he was fifth of that Scandinavian mix. Now I don't, I don't think this course is anything similar, but I just think that, well, the, the one that in 2019, sorry, he was fifth there, and that that was a course they mentioned could be similar to this one. Yeah. Um, and then he was tied third on the Czech on the Challenge Tour as well, a different course. So I think for me, just that good vibes of of the Czech course, the, the fairly similar one in the Scandinavian mix to uh, two years ago. A lot to like about Schwan Kim. Like he's been there, been there and about tonight. And I appreciate your comments and the fact that you've got a lot of guys around these numbers and couldn't quite, uh, you know, pull the trigger on him. You know, if you've got Leon Van Sonder and Porteous, you, what you can't, you can't just fit them all in, right? So you go Van Sonder, I'll go Kim, and and hopefully one of us gets there. So for me, I, I just really like him. I just, I just think he's an improving talent, and uh, he'll get over the line someday. Yeah, the, I. I he'd be the one if I see win, you know, that I'm like, how did you, you know, not have him on your card? And of course he's going to be very exposed to me on DraftKings. I really like you sticking onto him. It is just a matter of how many you can fit under, you know, 60 to one and, and four was my limit for me, but Schwan season could absolutely continue with a lot of birdies. Once again, um, I think we're going to flip the script a little bit here. Uh, 
looking at our cards, you know, based off of what we've done, you know, we are only going to be on a few long shots at this range, seeing 150 plus instead of jumping all the way to the end there, kind of playing our DraftKings game where we kind of throw out a name, a quick in or out. I think we can do this a little bit into the mid range, but we'll throw a couple, you know, more darts at the back end. But I'd be remiss if we just skipped over all of this back middle range, just because, you know, we've loaded up our, our betting cards on some area here. So, okay, we will go just under 9K and above like 7,500, just say I'm going to be starting to rip off a few names here. All right. How about in or out Sammy Valamaki? Out. Okay. Sunday 64, I think from him. Uh, yeah. Really good putter, but not enough for me. How about the unbelievable miscut by Sean Crocker? I mean, that was one of a kind. Yeah. I didn't think you were going to go there. I felt like there's a player that you've possibly skipped past that we always like to debate every single week. So I'll, I'll go back to him in a minute. I'll, I'll pose one to you. Um, but Sean Crocker, yeah. Uh, yes, in. I'm going to play him too. I think these are the weeks you oh, you have to play Crocker just because he, he's such a good driver of the golf ball. But, I mean, he went 66, 79 to miss the cut. I mean, that was uh, that was almost a full Keegan. Hit me, though. Aaron Fickle. I knew it. I knew it. I knew the last <laughs> name. Um, no. No. Too short. Too short. Off the tee. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I just It just seems to pop up in the nice places. So I just, if you're going to play him anywhere, I think it'd be dry. Yeah. It's just yeah. a solid guy to get you through the weekend. They have the uh, old man kind of crew together of Harrington, Krewitz, and Ficard, and then Stenson all together, four price right in a row. Um, we mentioned him in passing because of the ball striking. Maverick Ancliffe. No. Okay. Nikolai Hoygaard, 7,800. Yes. Yeah, I think he's going to be a popular one this week. Um, they kind of have a bombers. There's four bombers in a row, probably 7,800. Um, Adrian Maroc. Yes. He's he's the next one. Um, I think there's some value there with him. Hasn't been in the best form, but again, another elite driver of the golf ball. Uh, Brandon Stone. No. Agreed. Richard Manzel. Yes. Mm-hmm. Tapio Pokakin. Pokinen. Pokinen. I think Pokakin. He I wants, don't know how to wants, that sounds like a chicken. <laughs> he has those like little trilby hats, doesn't he? Uh Tapio. Uh no. Those those hop hats are pretty nice though. Um to Marcel Seam. Yes, because despite the fact that I keep thinking it's going to come to an end, it seems to carry on. Uh Paul Peterson. Yes. He, he's so short. He's like the opposite of what you'd expect to do well here. Um, One on this call, so. Yeah, and I know. That, that's what I'm saying. You know, like. And and strokes game, surname P. So. Yeah, there we go. Double, double P. Um, JC Ritchie. No. See, I think he's interesting on draft this week. 7,500. Form is intermittent on the challenge tour right now. Um, has some success here in the past. Um, 7,500 for him. Let's keep Hits the ball really like. Not- well, like off the tee, yes. it's impressive to actually watch. He would be, I think, in this field, a top ten when it comes to distance um, of guys with like actual sample size. Yeah, he's probably like top five. Um, so I think that's kind of the angle. I'm going to continue with DraftKings there. Um, we approach. No, our 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 bets are under seven thousand, so we'll keep going down to seven k here. Um, He's a really good driver of the golf ball, too. Sebastian Easily. I don't know how to pronounce German last names. Yeah, I would say Heisler, but I really don't know. And, yeah. Um, no, too inconsistent. Yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, you said Toby Tree in? Yes. Yep. 7,100 for Toby Tree this week. Bryden McPherson. Yes. And I thought you might have put him on your card, actually. I debated. I really did. Again, kind of a mid-range of making a decision if if you're going to back four guys at the top and then just really get along with it. Um, but he played well, finally, um, after he kind of got a little... I mean, he opened up with the best round that he... Like, his first round back after being off for three months was the best round he's had yet. Finished tied for, for 21st last week. I know there were some top 20 bets out there on him that fell one place short, which is always so brutal. Um, but Brian McPherson, I think, is a steal at $7,100 on DraftKings. Um, last one we will ask here, Reese Enoch. Yes. 
All right, he's 7K flat. Um, I'll start with, uh, I have two long shots. You have one remaining. Um, first one I'll be going in on is our old friend. I think he was one of our first bets, like maybe week one or two, Lars Van Miehel. I think I pronounced that correct. Um, well, if you pronounce it like Jason does in the podcast, he sounds like a cat. So he meows at him. So uh, yeah, you go, you are. So, so Lars is an interesting one as we did bring him up the week prior, um, as one of those who had a strong finish, I guess, strong is relative tied for 48th two weeks ago. Um, but that was in the opposite wave where we mentioned, you know, there was a five stroke difference between those two waves. So, you know, Lars, I think is a strong underlying finish. And then we see him finish seventh just last week. Um, you know, he doesn't get it done via, you know, ball striking, I guess, in the sense that his irons haven't been great, but his off the tee is better than you'd anticipate. He's actually, you know, from a distance perspective, probably upper 75 percentile, you know, um, from that perspective, he's still, you know, he's gaining a half stroke per round pretty much in those last three events, but that short game has been what's, you know, leading him, I guess, you know, last week he almost gained, I think seven strokes putting a little bit more than that, but 6,800, you know, 150s, 180s to one, I think it's worth chancing because I think those are actually two really strong finishes in a row and only one of them he's getting credit for. He's third in your greens under regulation statistic oh, as I well. I forgot. That was the one I was uh, going to bring up later. Smart. Yeah, Thank so, you. Yeah. So I'll make sure that comes up, but uh, you know, yeah, I think it's surprising. You look at a player like that and you just wonder how he's got there, right? Like, why is he in his position? Why is he playing every week? I don't really know much about him. Um, and like you said, you know, that, that full set place finish looked average. And then you you look at the reasons to why he finished like that. And it's very easy to see why he then performed so well last week. And, you know, you look at the fact he opened with a 73. Um, you know, he only finished two shots, three shots behind. You know, so I know it's all lives and buts. And, you know, we say that an awful lot, but... When you look into things like you do, like we do, just, you're looking at leaderboards in a lot wider context. And, you know, what happened? Like, Reese Enoch had a 77 on Saturday. Anything better than that? And he's, he's like, in contention on Sunday. So, it, it you know, it, it's very easy to just draw a line through someone because they finished tied 15th instead of 5th. But it's only really a matter of one stroke normally. That's one thing that I've I've actually been kind of as we talk through this, because you see leaderboards in one way, depending on the time of the day, someone disappears out of nowhere because of a quadruple bogey, this and that. But yeah, I think going through maybe seeing who played the, the best 54 holes, who played the best on the weekend, you know, Alexander LeVay, you know, was three strokes, three strokes, excuse me, better than anybody else on Saturday, Sunday, when he goes 66, 64. If you open to the final 54 holes, Jamie Donaldson and, and, and Van Meehill were the best players from Friday on. If you eliminate, again, like you mentioned, 77s from Reese Enoch, you know, actually, you know, LeVay shot uh, uh, 73 or, or Levy. I think I can never get him right either. Um, it's because you got Thomas LeVay and Alex Levy. Yeah, French. so Levy. That, there yeah. it is. Levy. Um, he would have, you know, he shot a 73 on Friday. He had, you know, combined 200 strokes from his other three days. If you eliminate that, Enoch is second. Uh, and Donaldson, uh, Van Nihil. Hoygaard, Callum Hill are actually all tied for third when you eliminate their worst round. So of course, you know, golf isn't as simple as that, <laughs> you know, it's, they're going to have the, these poor rounds mixed in, but if you see life and again, Lars's odds still have a lot of juice in them. You know, we're looking at one fifties, one eighties, each way is pay, paying healthy. So for me, I'm absolutely going in on him. Yeah. I'm mean, like you say, Brian McPherson as well, shot 74 in the opening day and bounced back really well. So I, I think, you just have to contextualize everything so much more. And, and especially with a week like this is the, it, it won't take a lot of winning. And I, I say that in the sense that there's one very clear favorite in Sam Horsfield. And then most of the other people in this field are, are similarly untested as the ones down the bottom of the market. So as long as they've got the right skill set in the sense that they can hit greens under regulation, they can make Eagles, they can hit it well off the tee. Like, I think everyone's live. Like there'll be names this week on DraftKings and on uh, and in the betting cards that you just won't have seen all year round. I can I can assure you there'll be a name that we haven't spoken about in every single one of our shows that'll be top five this week. Yeah, um, I could definitely kind of see that. I think your name right here is somebody who 
rarely has been talked about. They're seeing some incredibly deep odds, uh, especially over here in the States, even some 750s. Uh, but talk to us about your pick here. Yeah, Daniel Young. Um, he's a Scottish golfer. I don't know an awful lot about him. I've got to be completely honest with you. But he was 53rd at the Hero Open, which was average. But, you know, considering he's coming off the back of kind of five or six missed cuts on the Challenge Tour and European Tour combined. Um, but he was 29th place last week at the Kazoo Classic. And and when you look at it, he shot 72 on the final day. Um, and he was two shots outside or three shots outside the top 10. You know, he was 11th after 54 holes. I think he was... 13th after 36 holes. So he's really like he was in there for, for the best part of the week. Um, when you look at the the total Eagles, he's second um, or, you know, average Eagle rate um, in the European tour. He's, he's second in that. And par five scoring, he's, he's pretty good as well. So although I don't know an awful lot about him, the statistics suggest that this could be a good golf course for him. Six Eagles in 19 rounds is, is a decent strike rate. Barry Henson, eight in 24, is ahead of him. And then Callum Shinkwin starts with the people that are kind of, you know, doing it uh, consistently, you know, with 12 in 42 rounds. But for me, you know, this is a guy, we're talking about Vincent Norman and how good he is. He's had five Eagles in 21 rounds and Daniel Young's had six in 19. So there's got to be something. And the thing that kind of worried me a little bit is he doesn't gain strokes on the tee. So it's obviously not, it's not like he's long and straight. But if it's a case of the fact that he's decently long, and just wayward while this is a golf course that should give him sort of some breathing room you know there are water hazards but if you miss the water you're fine anywhere you know it's it's a pretty blank golf course so good trend in form um don't expect him to win but i can certainly see him sort of top 10 maybe top 20 and definitely DraftKings play yeah and he's trending well from a t green perspective 1.3 strokes per round just last week sixty two hundred dollars on DraftKings. Um, which, yeah, I think is absolutely worth chancing for the week. To round out my last selection, um, one that probably has seen his odds um, get cut in half, maybe. Uh, His odds name has actually been taken off the board in a couple spots overseas, but he's still in the field, according to the European Tour. Um, And it's Bobby Bay. Um, Ben Coley tipped him with me as well. He would also go by, let me uh, make sure if you talk about – ensuring pronunciations this one um you know from a perspective is not as easy i just refer to him as bobby um he's jing kai bay i think is is the name but yes he's he's bobby on draftings so just go yep. with Bobby. yep and then betting wise he's he's jing with it but um what we've seen out of bobby recently um is a a spike in kind of his so he's a regular corn fairy tour player that's getting a random start on the European tour basically is, is all you can chance. And he's, he's to the point where he's not in the corn Ferry tour finals or else he'd be playing, you know, in Boise this week with Bob McIntyre, who's, who is teeing it up at the corn Ferry finals. Sadly, Guido didn't take advantage of that. Um, but maybe next week, but he actually is in the European tour field next week. It says, so we'll see, but um, you know, so Bobby didn't have an opportunity uh, to play in the corn Ferry tour finals and gets this start after missing him to cut last week at the pinnacle bank championship but right before that he had a t13 in utah which included a 62 on friday um he two weeks prior to that monday qualified into the barbasol championship where he opened with i believe it was a 66th there also had around 68 on saturday um you know made the cut so i i think that a little juice here and there for a full-time corn fairy tour player. Again, not somebody who was sniffing, you know, the, the playoffs, but has probably more talent than some of these guys that we see getting into this mid range that we don't know anything about. And the best part about Bobby Bay's game is his distance off the tee ranking top 20 on the corn fairy tour. That's kind of the cherry on top for me. When you're looking at that, you know, you see somebody who does have a win on the challenge tour in 2019, won the Foshan open, which actually I don't think is that terrible of an event. If you looked at that leaderboard, Marty do, uh, you know, old, old Marty do right there. Second Callum Hill, third Richard Bland, fourth, uh, in that event, Matthew Jordan was in the top 10. Moronk was in the top 10. So, you know, a decent event. He did win in 2019. When we look at that talent, how it's uh, kind of grown over the last couple of years. So 
you know, to, to bet all of that, I saw numbers as deep as 275 to one this morning when I woke up, um, you know, that's probably going to be closer to the 150 range after, you know, we see Coley on it this week, but that does, you know, provide actually a little bit more confidence for me knowing Ben's on as he's had such a, you know, strong year and he's one of the best tipsters out there. So kind of loved that all accumulating for Bobby Bay at the number $6,500 on DraftKings too. Um, so I think definitely going to be pushing the chips in on him this week. I think we've seen before, you know, different because Lipsky had European Tour experience, but we we saw what Corn Ferry Tour form can lead to on the European Tour. Like, I think I think the Corn Ferry Tour is actually a lot stronger um, in terms of skill set than, than actually it gets a lot of credit for. I think it's always just seen as a birdie fest, which it is, but you have a real, real good, you know, a lot of those guys, they come over to European Tour and, and, and people see this as a massive... Uh, critical like critical of the european tour but it's not it's just the game can translate really, really well you look at you just mentioned at foshan open he was five shots clear of callum hill uh six shots clear of richard bland um you know eight shots clear of matthew jordan you know and then the guys that we've spoken about on this podcast today garrett porteous was tied 25th reese enoch was tied 25th will bestling we've talked about an awful lot you know that they're, they're not it's not a you know, a terrible field. Lars Van Meehill was there at 47th. You know, everyone that we've kind of mentioned, he's beaten. So he has the capability to do it. I think he only missed out on the Monday qualifier before that Utah check. I think he missed by one as well. So he's been in a lot of good form. You know, it's hard. It's a real hard grind to go from that corn ferry to try to Monday qualify. And, you know, we saw it at a massively larger scale with someone like Will Zalatoris. The, the trying to Monday in events and then prepare for a tournament that you are in is incredibly difficult and trying to balance that act. So if he can land somewhere and get status somewhere, um, that would be really, really interesting to see. And another point, just while I mentioned Bulls out of is he could be on the European Tour uh, in a couple of starts because he's not going to be playing yeah. the FedEx Cup playoffs. Um, I think we see him at Wentworth for sure. That, that was what I was going to say. I think that BMW PGA Championship, we've seen Billy Horshaw, we've seen uh, Victor Hovland, Tony Finau. Patrick um, Reed. Yep. Patrick Reed's been over there a couple of times. So I really do think we'll probably see him um so keep an eye out for that that's going to be our probably our biggest event now until the end of the season uh, until the final dubai event yeah um and uh before we wrap it up here i would just talk through um just a couple of names from the national spots that are getting um uh, into the field from um uh Czechia, if you looked into Alice Korninek, I believe was the one we spoke on a little bit earlier. He is a performer or, or former professional soccer goalie for uh, his country there. He's 38 years old, turned golf pro, turned pretty decent. He's running three consecutive top tens uh, between one even on the challenge tour, another one on the pro golf tour. Um, if you look at his price on DraftKings this week, just 6,300 for him. And then the other one was uh, Jakob Bars, 26 year old, um, who has back-to-back -back seventh place finishes, um, who uh, would be, I would say those would be the two um, that have the best form um, of those guys. He's 6,400 on DraftKings this week. Was there anybody else um, down in that range? I mean, Coronek was the one for me, wasn't it? I, I sort of yeah. said to you earlier that he stuck out to me. We, we spoke a few podcasts ago now on guys coming off the pro golf tour and it being kind of more relative than maybe uh, it could be. And he's got a he got a victory there, didn't he? But when I, yep. when I was kind of sitting there thinking, oh, maybe this is this young stud coming out of check back here and then when you look into it he's a 37 year old former soccer player you're like okay so maybe he's not a you know it's not his thing but what i will say is that he was tied eighth in the uran bake open uh challenge tour event uh not so long ago and that had yep. chase hannah in there uh, i think he was only one shot behind him um you know i think he beat santiago bentario you know there's been a there's an awful lot to like about him as, as a as a real long shot i'm just putting up that peterboard now so Stuart Manley won the event. He's pretty experienced. Uh, Ewan Ferguson's been playing some great golf. Yes. Um, but around I can't him, wait for him next year. Ferguson's yeah. going to get a win next year. Absolutely. He's going to be superb. And one shot behind Chase Hanna, tied with Daniel Gavins, who's obviously just made the leap on European Tour. Uh, a shot ahead of Matteo Manassaro, Paul Peterson. Two shots ahead of Ben Tario, <clears throat> Yannick Paul. There's a lot of talented players that he's beaten there. Um, so form is form, right? You know, yes, he's 37 years of age. He may never get a chance to play in this event ever again. So go and have a week. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think these are the differentiators on DraftKings. One, two percent, you know, kind of probably tops out for that. Um, but let's uh, review the betting cards, kind of wrap up our week here. Tom, can you go through yours for me? Yeah. So, yeah, Kroisovic's there at 28 to one. Just really love it. Just ticks everything for me, um, especially the Eagles at par five performances, et cetera. Um, Shawan Kim uh, really likes the, the correlative form that he's got going there, playing some really good golf. Garrick Porteous with yourself. Um, and Daniel Young as an outsider for me at 750 to one. Yeah. And I really do like your card guys that, you know, are, were on my short list ones that I will be playing on DraftKings heavily for the week. Um, mine is Vincent Norman, 28, Hugo Leon, 35, which is love Hugo to, to get a victory here. Um, Daniel Van name. Tonder. <laughs> yes. <of> Hugo <laughs> Leon. <laughs> oh, it's the best. Daniel Van Tonder, 40 to one. Garrick Porteous with you as well. Going back at 55 to one. Lars Van Meel, 180 to one. And Bobby Bay, 200 to one. If you can find that number, but that kind of wraps it up. Excited for that. And again, we do hit a stretch on the European tour uh, where we are going to see a little increase um, in hopefully field strengths. Yeah. Wentworth is, you know, kind of the, the steam event of the year um and of course hopefully you know as we gear up we're going to kind of see these main guys getting back into the mix here and competing as we gear up i mean Ryder cup is five weeks away well you got you so you got the the cran Cercier next week yeah. is the most stunning golf course in the entire the world you'll get some good that's got beer guard written all over it actually it has indeed it. it has yeah. and uh is bob back as well for that one Depends if if he if he wants to stay in the corn fairy. I, I I bet he chases corn fairy unless he you know gets an automatic spot yeah. with a win basically. I think it's it's got that balance now, isn't it? He's got to try and get a PJ tour card and impress for the Ryder Cup as well. So it's a it's a tight thing, Steve. You've got that one. You've got the Italian Open. I'm sure Guido will be there representing. Maybe that's why Guido's not playing the corn fairy is because he didn't want to risk missing the Italian Open. That's it. He's he's going to go home win that, and then you've got Wentworth. And I think yeah, like you say, they've got a Dutch Open in between the Ryder Cup. So. Um, but I think, you know, I think just before we go, it was a really exciting end to the European tour. You know, once the, the FedEx Cup playoffs are out of the way, you know, you've got the Ryder Cup, then you've got Dunhill Links the following week. Um, you've got uh, Valderrama in October. You've got the HSBC Champions, the Volvo China Open is always a really good event. And then the DP World Tour. So I think the European tour will come into its own towards the end of 2021. And I really hope I haven't seen the schedule for the following year. You know, December is not on the PGA Tour calendar. So if we can get some standalone events on the European Tour, get those prize pools for the DraftKings Golf, you know, European Tour contest juiced up a little bit. Um, that always helps bring more crowds to that. That would have probably be one of our bigger shows of the year if we're offered, you know, a, a five figure first place, if not higher, um, you know, that we rarely see for DraftKings European Tour. And, and we're seeing a decent one actually for the Open Championship on the ladies side this week. 5k to first place so excited to dive into that um but that kind of puts a bow i think on what we're talking this week we're, we're aligning with great drivers of the golf ball ready to see some greens under regulation some eagles and some guys going low so good luck everybody and thanks again for your support